Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I've got the tank review for the brand new French tier 9 premium heavy tank, the Lorraine AMX M4. This is a decent heavy tank, although it's not really a heavy tank, it's actually a medium tank to be perfectly honest. It's classified as a heavy, but the way it plays is a medium tank. Try not to play it as much like a heavy tank, otherwise if you try, start trying to brawl with heavy tanks that have armour, you'll get wrecked. This tank is pretty solid hull down because it has a really good turret in this AMXM 451 turret that's slapped onto a Lorraine 40T hull. And it is the Lorraine 50T from PC, but it's different because they've got this 120mm gun and they've got a second choice, which is a 130mm gun. Now, naturally, I think this 120mm gun is the best gun on the tank. But the 130mm adds character to it, and I think it actually makes the tank just a little bit more fun to play, even if it's got less DPM, the accuracy is worse, etc. It's a little bit fun for me, more fun for me, but I think it's probably more competitive with this 120mm gun, and I would probably suggest for most people this gun is going to be the one that people pick. But it depends whether you're an alpha whore like I am. It's got, like I say, really solid turret, like the MXM 451. It's got really good gun. It's got really good mobility as well, because it's like the Lorraine 40T. It's got 60km an hour top speed, which it hits, and you can travel it that. But this hull armor on it is the Lorraine 40T, just a little bit buffed on the upper plate, but that's it. And it's absolutely terrible. And easily penned by absolutely everything, which is why I say it's a medium tank. You play it like a medium tank, where you're going to go to aggressive positions, where you can get hull down and use the good turret armor and then use the gun prowess, essentially. And the mobility on this tank is pretty solid, but honestly, this hull armor is complete trash, which is why I say play it like a medium, not a heavy tank. Heavy tank by name, but not by nature. It's a decent tank, like I say. Is it worth the 12,000 gold that it's currently on sale at for 30% off, I think, as well, that they've labeled it? Only you can decide that, to be honest. I think there's probably a lot better out there, but it's not like it's bottom of the pile terrible, right? It's still, still okay. It's, it's, it's down to you, because you could probably spend a lot less and get a more OP tier 8 premium, or just a tier 8 premium that's really solid for its tier and makes you a lot of credits, because naturally this doesn't make credits. Or you could buy, again for a similar price, a Cold War premium that will make you an absolute butt ton of silver, Cost you the same, you probably could just have just as much fun if you if you like Cold War, naturally. Or you could save up an extra four or five thousand gold in itself and buy any number of the tier 10 premiums like a Turan, for example, whenever that comes back on sale. It's it's down to you. Only you can decide what is worth in this game. I will just put out what this tank is like for you to see what how it handles and stuff and help you along in your decision. So Let's have a look at the stats without further ado of this AMX M4 Lorraine or Lorraine AMX M4. So first off we've got the stats of the 120mm gun, then I'll equip the 130 and show you that as well. But first with the mobility we've got 980 horsepower with a 60km an hour top speed and 15km an hour reverse speed. 17.82 horsepower per tonne means you hit this 60km an hour pretty easily. But just be aware that it is a bit sluggish off the mark, so you don't initially accelerate really quickly towards 60, but once you start to get going, you do hit it. So that is something that is for a tank. Like I say, that helps it play more like a medium than it does a heavy tank. That mobility is absolutely incredible for this tank, to be fair. It's got 1,750 hit points, which is pretty damn decent. You take that every day. 34 degrees a second on the hull rotation, which is pretty decent, but I want... I personally make that a little bit better because I want to play more like a medium so I like having the ability to have a bit better in terms of the traverse and that with stuff like clutch braking. You've got soft terrain resistance as 1.8, medium of 1 and firm of 0.9. Now the terrain resistances aren't actually that bad but I will help those out to be able to help it just hit that 60 kilometers an hour and help me accelerate just a little bit quicker to get that 60 kilometers an hour. Always helping these is nice for a heavy tank that relies on its mobility, because this tank does rely on its mobility a lot. Camo, absolutely no camo. So this is where the, the only difference you'll have between this tank and a medium tank. There's a lot of medium tanks where you'll be able to take a lot of bush, bush positions and stay unspotted and stuff like that. The Lorraine MX-4 is not going to stay unspotted. It's a heavy tank in terms of its camo. It's spotted by everything, right? So it's got no camo. It's what you expect from a heavy tank. Let's keep playing like a medium, though. You've got 380 meters view range, which is actually fairly low for a tier 9 heavy. A lot of the tier 9 heavies are pushing 390, 400 meters, so yeah, 10 meters less. Doesn't really affect it too badly, but 
you might want to help the viewer interest stuff like situational awareness like you naturally would or and then put coated optics and stuff like that on in terms of the turret traverse you got 30 degrees a second on the turret 0.99 accuracy on during the rotation so it doesn't actually bloom that much when you turn the turret which is really quite nice 15 degrees of elevation which is okay and 10 degrees of gun depression which is absolutely fabulous that means you're going to be able to use ridge lines really effectively and ridge lines is where this tank is going to want to be so that 10 degrees of gun depression makes a lovely time for this tank. Really nice for the flexibility. So, this is where we get to the 120mm gun stats. So it's got a 12 second reload with 0.33 accuracy, which this 0.33 accuracy is fantastic for this 120mm gun. It's like a quite a few of the 120mm guns, like the Conqueror gun for example. It's really accurate, it's really nice. It means you might not have to run vert stabs, it's down to you and how you feel the gun handles. You got 2.97 accuracy during movement, which is actually pretty bad. And again, that's where you might want to run vert stabs to so just help it with that accuracy during the movement. Aim time of 2.5 seconds, which actually is worse than the 130 millimeter, which is really weird. But the 2.5 is a little bit annoying. You do feel like you aim for a little bit longer than you necessarily feel like you should for a 120 millimeter gun. Not necessarily horrific. But it can just be a little bit annoying at times. And obviously with the accuracy drum movement and stuff like that, it can mean that the gun being bloomed out quite a lot after movement can be a little bit annoying. So yeah, just bear that in mind. 2.5 can be just a little bit irritating, but it's not horrific. It's okay. You do have AP, APCR and HE on the 120mm gun. 2000 base DPM, let's say with the 12, is, is not too bad for a tier 9 heavy. A lot of the heavy tanks are put between that 10 and 12 second reload gap and then there's the outliers that are absolutely horrific beyond 13 seconds you've got 264 pen on the ap round which is fantastic 308 on the premium which is fine you'll deal with everything you'll face with those rounds which is great you've got 400 alpha on the 120 mil gun like normal 1000 meters a second on the shell velocity or 1067 anyway on the standard ap and 1334 meters a second on that apcr this is where the big difference in the 130mm to the 120 is because the shell velocity on the 120 is absolutely fantastic, especially if you load premium. It's fantastic. You're going to hit so much stuff really easily and you don't feel like shells really loop out the barrel, which is nice. Whereas when you get the 130mm gun, you're down to like 800 odd shell velocity and it's a little bit sad at times when you're just having to lead and also trying to snap shots at people on ridge lines and the shells just go and loop off into the middle of absolutely nowhere which is yeah very very annoying but that 120 mil gun like i say with these stats like the better accuracy slightly better dpm i believe it has fully pumped out than the 130 and the really good shell velocity that's why i say that this gun is probably better for the tank than the 130 but the 130 millimeter does have character is what it is let's go have a look at the stats of the 130 millimeter as well and have a quick look at this. So yeah, this tank reveal will a little, be a little bit longer than normal because naturally you're going to get two replays in both with both guns and we've got to go over both guns as well. There's a lot to go over for this tank. So, okay, this is where the gun stats change. So, 1.33 accuracy during rotation. With the 130mm gun, the accuracy is actually worse on turning the turret and it blooms a little bit worse, like you'd expect with a bigger caliber gun. You only have 8 degrees of gun depression with the 130mm as opposed to 10 degrees with 120 which just limits your flexibility a little bit, but 8 degrees isn't bad by any means. You've got a 17.5 second reload, which is it does feel quite long at times after you fired your shot, especially if you miss. You sit there going, oh, I wish I reloaded a little bit quicker. But you have 1921 base DPM, which is only 80 less than the 120mm. Which is the way it should be. This gun should have worse DPM technically than the 120 every time. So that's just the way it works out. You've got 0.37 accuracy, which is worse than the 0.33 of the 120. Still not horrific, and you can get that down quite easily with the gun perks and stuff like that. And again, vert stabs. And yeah, you've got 3.33 3, 3 on accuracy during movement, which is even worse, again, than the 120mm gun. Like I say, this, this gun feels far derpier, and it is far derpier, but it hits like a truck 
for 560, <laughs> 560 alpha at tier 9, which is really, really goddamn nice. So when you catch people out and you slap them, you do hit very hard. And I've hit people for like 630, 640, well, 630, 620. I think it was 628 was the highest roll I've had with this gun. And it's really filthy when it hits for that. So 560 alpha is really nice. You, it slaps, like I say, it gives this tank absolute character, which is nice. 2.3 second aim time as well. Is actually better than the 120mm gun, which is weird. It does feel weird that that is the thing, but it is what it is. Like I said, this gun does feel a lot derpier, and those are the differences. Also, 840 meters shell velocity is not great, and you will have to require a lot of lead to make sure that these shells hit. And like I said, when you're trying to snapshot a little bit more as well with the worst accuracy during rotation on the move, it doesn't do it as well as it does firing the the 120 mil gun the 120 mil gun is just generally a better gun than this but that's it this gun gives it character and it does generally feel quite nice to use at times and i like it because it's got higher alpha that's just me that's my personal preference but i think the 120 millimeter gun will probably be more for everyone else essentially so yeah that's the stats of the two guns let's go see what we actually put on in terms of equipment so in terms of equipment i put on rammer Vert stabs and optics. Optics, like I said, 380 meters view range is not the best, so I want to make it as good as possible. Vert stabs for the 130 mil because it really goddamn needs it, so you really want to help it as much as possible with that piece of equipment and rammer to make your DPM 10% better, like always. But if you're using the 120 millimeter gun, because the gun stats on it aren't actually really that bad at all. You might want to remove the vert stabs and put on vents to make everything about the tank just that little bit better if you want. You could put on the traction system to make yourself go at 66 kilometers an hour if you want. And just make that whole rotation speed just better as well by 10%, which is always nice. Or you could run the powertrain if you feel it's just that little bit too sluggish. And you want to, you know, give it a little bit more oomph in the engine, right? Or you put the GLD on because you get a little bit annoyed at the 2.5 second aim time. So you want to make your... Aim time 12% better. It's completely up to you. I ran for the whole thing just the same setup of this Rammer Vert Stabs and Optics just to make the gun as nice as possible and then be able to spot for myself. It's down to your personal preferences. I've told you why the other ones might be good for the 120mm. But this is probably the best thing to do for the 130 We'll just put on the uh, normal consumables. So let's go have a quick look at the old stats of the tank with these pieces of equipment so we've got the 130 millimeter gun enabled oh actually let's go let's go through the commander first because that's the best way of doing it because then we can see how it is fully pimped don't want to make that mistake so let's put the mxm 451 crew into here and that is this is the crew that i ran again i run born leader rapid reload six sense situational awareness trap mechanic steady aim run and gun off-road driving and clutch braking now with the 130mm gun, because it is quite derpy, and it's quite bad during rotation and stuff like that, you might want to drop clutch braking and put on snapshot instead. Again, it's different between the two guns. But with the 120mm gun, this is what I run to make it so that the off-road driving helps my ground resistances, helps me get that little bit better acceleration. Clutch braking to make it 7.5% better on hull rotation speed. Just give me a little bit better hull rotation so I can feel a bit more like a medium tank. And then steady aim and run a gun to make the gun just that little bit better. Trap mechanic especially for this tank because it has no armour. And unfortunately, that just means that it gets done in a lot with the side armour especially. Because if you have a look here where the tracks are, it's got 30mm of armour. On this side where the tracks and the side armor are which means that it gets overmatched by 91 plus millimeter caliber guns all the time and if you think about like a 50 beer on machine where a lot of tanks at tier 10 can shoot them at any angle and track and pen them quite easily as long as it's facing towards the hull this tank is exactly the same and it gets tracked and penned a hell of a lot and its tracks get blown off a lot as well. So it's just something that you might want to consider having track mechanic for. Also, it does only have 40mm of side armour on that top end as well. Which, yeah, it means it gets overmatched by 121mm calibre guns as well. Plus, which is a lot of guns again at tier 9 and 10. Which means the side armour in this tank is not very good at all. It gets overmatched a lot. Which means it can't really side scrape 
which is why I say it's a ridgeline warrior. You just want to be on ridgelines and hope for the best, pretty much, with this tank. The only difference between this hull as well and the Lorraine 40T chassis is that this gets 90mm of hull armour on the top instead of the 40 that the Lorraine gets, which helps it against dirt guns like Tusks and T49s. That means they don't auto-pen you everywhere. But it's still terrible and gets penned by everything, pretty much. So let's have a look at the old stats of the tank. Now it's got the crew and the equipment on it. So as you can see, it's got a 37 degrees a second hull rotation speed with the clutch braking. It's got 1.36 on soft, 0.84 on medium, and 0.83 on firm with the off-road driving. It's got 486 meters view range with the setup we've got, which is the best you can get it. Well, unless you put vents on, it's the best you can get it up to. And it's got 32.58 degrees a second on the turret tra traverse. It's got 0.87 accuracy during the rotation, which is a little bit better than the 0.99. It makes it a little bit nicer, which is decent. You've got an 8.75 reload with this 120mm gun, which is really nice, to be honest. And you've got 2.7k DPM, which, yeah, this 120mm gun is really nice for that. The reload is pretty decent. And with 0.27 accuracy, you hit a lot of your shots as well with the accuracy during rotation being knocked down to 1.69, which is lovely because of the vert stabs. 2.3 second aim time, you've got it down to as well, which is pretty solid. Down from 2.5, 2.3 ain't bad, but at the same time, it does feel a little bit long at times, but 2.3 is not too bad. But yeah, that's the stats with the 120mm gun. Let's just go and equip the 130 so you can get a good look at it. And on the 130... You've been knocked down to 1.17 accuracy during rotation on the turret. You got a 12.7 second reload instead of 17.5, which is, yeah, more manageable, like I say, but it still does feel quite a long time to reload. 2.6k DPM, though, is still really solid. You've got 0.3 accuracy instead of 0.37. You've got 1.9 accuracy during movement, which is a lot, lot better than the 3.33. So, with vert stabs, that's what that knocks down to, which is really nice. 2.12 second aim time, which is great for a 130mm gun with 560 alpha as well. So, yeah, this, like I said, this gun adds character to it. It makes it really quite nice to play at times, but I do think the 120 is better. But it's down to personal preference, to be fair. Whether you, like, you prefer the slapping alpha or you prefer the better DPM and just generally better handling. It's completely down to you. But yeah, this AMX... M4 Lorraine, or Lorraine MX M4, I'm going to get that mixed up all the time, is a pretty decent tank. It's pretty okay. It's got that novelty factor in having this big-ass gun on it, which is nice. But if you fit the 120mm, you can be competitive as well. It's not a world-beater of a tank, but it's also not bad. It's just okay, essentially. And I think a lot of people won't like it because this hull armour is completely trash. And you've only got turret armour. But a lot of people might like it because the mobility is actually really good and you do have this, the just really nice gun and essentially you can play it like a medium tank. So as always, everybody, I'm going to send you over to the replays where you can make up your own mind. Yeah, sorry this bit is a little bit longer than normal, but there's quite a lot to go over with having two guns on the tank. So as always, everybody, I will see you in the replays. So here we are in the replays with the Lorraine MX M4. And this is the... Probably the more average game I have with the 120mm gun, where it sort of, it does pretty well, but for the most part it's just, you know, it's the more average game, right? It's what you're going to have more often than not. And yeah, this 120mm gun is the, the definitely the more solid option to pick for playing the tank. I just think it's generally far nicer to play with, because the gun handling is a lot nicer. The DPM, the actual, the, you know, 8.8 second reload is is pretty solid. As opposed to having like the 12 second reload on the 130mm, especially when you miss with the 130mm, which happens a decent amount because it's derpy, you feel like you're twiddling your thumbs a lot when you're having to reload and it's just kind of annoying. But when you've got this 120, you just keep firing and it's, it's definitely nicer. But then you don't have the stopping power that that 130 has. And when you do hit people for like 560, it's just really nice. It hits just so good but 120 millimeter is definitely far far more consistent and i would definitely suggest it and we're on this first map which is fisherman's bay and we're taking this position here at f 
6, which is a position that I'll tend to take a lot of the time, especially if I've got a tank with good gun depression, because you can attack the people that attack the town, you can get good side shots on them, if, especially if they're unawares, and you can battle the people and spot the people that are here at E6 as well, on their side. Now, unfortunately, there we got slapped by the opposition Lorraine MX M4, and... Yeah, you can see it does hurt. He's got the 130mm gun. You can tell by the barrel. That is the one thing that you'll notice between the two. The 130mm barrel is rounded all the way, whereas the 120mm has that muzzle break, which is quite distinctive as well. So you do be able to tell between the two which is which. And you can see we can get a nice shot there into the air mech into the type 4 heavy there as he's crossing we're up to 833 damage i'm just being careful because i don't want to over peak because like i say the hull armor on this tank is tragic and if i over peak it's not going to be a great time because they'll just pen it we get a nice shot into the other lorraine amx m4 there with this gun like i said you can really tell the shell velocity on the difference between the two shell velocities because the shell velocity on this tank is nice for that thousand meters a second it really especially with the turret traverse or sorry, the, during, the accuracy during rotation and the accuracy during the movement as well. You can just feel how much nicer this gun is to use. And you, you're seeing it a little bit. Except for some of the rushed shots like the one on the TNH that we just missed. We're up to 2,000 damage. We've got 1,440 blocks. And that's because, like I said, the turret armor is really nice. I decide there, you know what? The thing that's stopping my team from being able to truly shoot the Type 4 and kill him is that building, and that building is an annoying one as well. So I decided to shoot the building and let my team kill him, and if the team didn't manage to kill him there after destroying the building, I would have had shots at him from this position. That little building is always a good one to destroy if you take this position, because it can block your efforts at getting shots into those guys. Unfortunately there, the TNH ends up coming up, and our shell just, I think our shell just went straight underneath him, which is really unlucky. And he managed to get a shot into us with his gun. Obviously, it's a two-shot auto That tank is it's definitely better than this tank is, and it hurts a lot when it hits. And the two-shot auto on top, yeah, it can sting. There we've got the top of the MXM4 Lorraine's turret. And we go straight through it, because we are shooting down at it. It's not the strongest on the side or on the top. So if you are above them, you will be able to hit it and pen it, which is fine. So we're just being careful here because I was trying to push for a shot and look for a shot at these guys, but I was getting detected and I was thinking, I don't know if that's the guys in front of me, but from here I'm also vulnerable to B2 and B3 or A3. So anyone that's camping on their sniper hill could probably hit me, which I don't want naturally because I think there's a TD in here, which is a 268, which will hurt. And, yeah, we don't want that. So I decided, you know what? Screw attacking from that side. We're going to go to a different flanked position to start trying to get shallow shots into those guys. And what I wanted to do was poke around here, shut this TNH down before he gets any more shots into my team. And if I get detected, like I am now, I can actually pull back behind this building here and keep myself as safe as possible from their sniper ridge. Unfortunately, our shot that we snapped at the TNH missed, but fortunately enough as well, before we got hit by that TNH, our friends shut him down. Now, I'm just using the detected here to try and work out what was looking at me. This TVP was actually the one looking at me, but I was wondering, if I pulled back any further around the building, was I being looked at by something down at B2, or was it the, you know, just the TVP looking at me? Couldn't quite work it out, but we did manage to get a shot into the TVP, which puts us up to 2.7k with a thousand assistance, which is decent as well. We missed the first snapshot of the T95 E6, this time fully aimed. We do get the shot in to shut him down, and we're up to 3k damage. And right here, I'm just right here, I'm just waiting. I'm just waiting because I'm thinking, right, okay, you know what? I could push under their ridge and see if I can get some shots in to spot them. Because this is the only real place where they possibly can be, is that ridge where this 140 is. We get a nice shot feathered into the 140, and now we're detected, and I'm thinking, oh, God, something is looking at me with a probably a big gun. There it is. It's the 268. Fortunately enough, the 268 actually missed us. Whew, bit lucky there. But I wanted to just immediately push straight down here, and I could get some spotting. We're up to 1,400 assistance, which is nice, and we're still getting spotting on that 268 just as he got unspotted there, which pushes up to 1,800 just because we made this push, and we got lucky that the guy didn't kill us. And now we are hopefully going to get some nice side shots into this 268 and the other medium tank. So we get a nice shot snapped into the 268. We get a little, well, we get far more assistance on him as he gets all of his health taken away. Now we've got this bat chat who I think has just fired his whole clip, put a shot into his upper plate, 
and then he gets shut down by our team. And we finished the game with a nice total for the MXM4 Lorraine. And we finished with 4.2k damage, 2.7k assistance. First class, the Confederate, 626 base XP. A really solid game for the Lorraine MXM4. And it's probably the more average game that you're going to see in terms of damage. Obviously, the assistance bumps up our base XP a lot as well, just because we made that push play. But that's where the mobility... Obviously, barring the fact that we got lucky that the 268 didn't hit us... That's where the mobility is really nice as well because we got up to 60 kilometers an hour down that hill really quickly and we got under as fast as possible to be able to get into position ahead of our team to do the damage, right? So now we're on to the second replay and this is the best game I had with the 120mm gun on this tank. And we're on Pearl River and Pearl River I'm thinking, well I could go to the middle and brawl in there but I decided, you know what, while I could take the middle area and the middle area is a very important part of this map because you can shoot out along this JK line quite easily. But if you push this JK line quite aggressively, they will struggle to be able to deal with you unless they've got a lot of people camping at J6, which generally tends to be the case. A lot of people camp along that spot, and if you push aggressively straight down here where we're going to here, you can spot a lot of them, and if you've got enough people sitting to snipe and stuff, especially if the people take the middle as well, you'll be able to get a prop probably a good amount of assistance and right here this 262a has really caught himself in a very bad position we get a nice shot through his upper plate which sets him on fire and he ends up getting shut down by the m48a5 we also got another shot or two into him before that so we're going to use the mobility of this tank to push aggressively straight down here as you can see we're doing 52 51 at the minute and we're in water which ten generally tends to slow you down a lot and you see the mobility of this tank is really nice. It's really quick and it's definitely more medium light than a heavy tank. Um, we've pushed this position in. We're now hull down, which means our turret is the only thing that they can see. And I was just looking thinking, normally I've spotted something by now. I was spotted and I did get detected. But I'm not spotting anything and I'm not getting spotted at this point. Now, as soon as I crest, naturally I get spotted. It is a Barask, which we do manage to snap a shot into. And his second shot ended up hitting our turret and bouncing. And yeah, I thought, there's a lot spotted at the minute on the other side of the map, which is very unusual for this map. That doesn't tend to happen that often. And I was thinking, hmm, I'm not really getting detected. I wasn't getting spotted. I'll push aggressively, see what's down here, and, you know, whatever happens or what will be will be. There is nothing here. The Baraska's run away, which means we get a nice shot into the back of the TNH VZ-51. And we're just going to keep progressing, because now we're shot at TNH. He's going to run away, naturally, which is what he's done, because he doesn't want to keep getting shot in the bum. So we're going to chase after this Barask and see if he's round here and hopefully get some shots in to kill the artillery. And there's the Barask. It's like, oh, hello, friend. Fortunately, that shell deviates and only tracks him. But we do get a nice ram in. And unfortunately, we ended up losing quite a bit of HP for that, which we'll probably have needed later on. And yeah, the Barask gets shut down as well as spotting artillery, which is nice. We're just going for the tracking shot, which I think we get. And then, yeah, I just get detected. So I'm like, you know, I'm going to pull back. But... The TNH was the one that actually spotted us and tried to get shot at us, and he pulled back because of the medium. I'm going to run this way to the left because I'm anticipating something's pulled back from where the heavy tanks have been brawling on the B9C0 section. And what I want to do is push straight to where this TNH is, get rid of him, and then I can sort of push around the other way. We get detected, and it's like, okay, there is something definitely over there. There we go. He gets spotted. It's a Progetto. Nice RBRT on the move there to sh get a nice shot into him. And now we're in the safe position. We're underneath this TNH. I look at him and it's like, okay, look at his gun, gun barrel. His gun barrel isn't rounded. It's got the gun, the muzzle break, which means he's a single shot. Which, naturally, he's still really nice with the single shot, but he's not got that double tap power. Which means I'm not quite as scared of him. We're just looking for the shot here. And, oh, unfortunately, it just snaps into the rock next to him. Really annoying shot there that we miss, which means he can poke out and get a shot into us, which means he... Sadly, if we'd hit that shot, we'd have shut him down with that, that one there. But it is what it is. And he puts us down to 581 hit points, which is really awkward. But I've just got to be careful now, because naturally, like I say, we've got no armour. He's easily going to pen us. I do have to be careful. So I'm going to take it very, very steady, coming around this corner. And then you notice that tree went down there. That tree went down and I was like, okay, something else might be coming to help this TNH. I'm not going to poke this corner and go around and then get spotted and shot in the bum while chasing after him. As you can see, the TNH has actually moved into the middle. 
So I'm like, okay, you know, I'm going to look at this iron art, well, this medium tank that's attacking our M48. I'm going to see if I can help him, but he's probably going to die to the M48. There's no point going. And there's the tank. It's a <laughs> Carnarvon. It's like, oh, hello, Mr. Carnarvon. Well, that was not what I expected. He's actually stock. He's got the stock gun. And it's like, right, okay, well, he's going to hurt me not that much. So what I'm going to do is poke around, blap him in the lower plate, and hopefully get to a time where I can shut him down. He ends up penning us again, which is really sad, because, again, we'll probably need those hit points. And... Yeah, we shut him down, he's gone. I was expecting the TNH to appear at any point and just drive around and shut us down. But that doesn't quite happen. I'm thinking, hmm, okay, the TNH is probably still in the middle then. He's not bothered moving from there. We've got two guys in the cap, so what I want to do is try and take this middle area. And then that way we're safe from being shot. Well, is the cap's safe from being shot from the middle. This TNH was trying to get shots at them, as you see. That's dealt. Now, the next target on my list is the Cranvarn. You can see he was spotted. I don't want him in that position either. I don't want him in the, with the ability to come after me. So the next one is, okay, we're going to go shut down the Cranvarn. Hopefully, he's not realised I'm coming behind him, and then we can shut him down and save the people in the cap, which happens. It's like, well, there we go. There's five tanks left, which uh, quite a few have been, have been spotted down here. So we're just going to wait for the reload to come in and drive out and see if we can see them. There we spot the IS-3, which we get a nice shot into his side there. And puts him on like 400 odd hit points. But he's now aware of us. And he's been very careful. But we're just going to drive around and see if we can get... Oh, unfortunately, the STG ends up shutting down one of the guys in the cap. And I can poke around to get a shot at this guy and stay safe. But we are staying lit at the minute. Which is kind of annoying. But, yeah. We're just being very, very careful. Because we could get shut down. As soon as we get detected, you can see we pulled back. Which meant that we actually managed to avoid the shell there. From, I think it was the light tank in the distance. We get a nice shot snapped into the I3, which puts him down into a one-shot. This light tank stops to get a shot at us, but we just make sure that we get the shot into him, which puts him down to a one-shot for us as well, which means we now know that three of them are a one-shot so far. Then we spot the Kanona Jagdpanzer, and unfortunately the timing was just off, because if we'd st stayed facing the other way, we'd have been able to shut him down as well, because he's a one-shot. So currently we're against four one-shot tanks that we know of. There's currently a Ragnarok somewhere as well, that we don't know what HP is on. He was last spotted around our base, so we do have to be careful of that. And it's like, oh, this is now very awkward because we're 5v1. But it could quite easily turn in our favour, especially if they go 1v1 against us. We end up spotting the IS-3 there, and it's like, right, let's just get rid of him, take the risk, which we managed to do. We get rid of him there. We get detected, and it's like, mm, okay, was that from behind me, or was that just from the side? And I was thinking, was something possibly poking up there I didn't quite get a glimpse of? Or is it, the thing with this middle area, while it is important, it's also an area where you can get shot from multiple angles, which can be very awkward. So when you get detected sometimes, there's a lot of different ways that people can shoot at you. But it's also a choke point, which is nice for me. And that's what I want in this sort of situation, especially when I know a lot of them are single shots. So I'm going to take up a position over here where I can sort of hug this building and then basically lay in wait. And I'm hoping someone will come chasing after me. I'm anticipating possibly the light tank will come sprinting after us into this middle area. And if they're going to come up, there is really... Well, there's two ways they could come up, right? They could use one of the climbs on the ring round the back end, which they have to have some speed to do, but not everyone knows that they can do it. Or they're going to come down the choke point here. We end up getting lit there by the Colonial Jagdpanzer. It's like, okay, I'm going after it. Oh, no, we're detected. Pull back. Thankfully it bounces, that was reactions there to realise we were detected, we shut down the SDG with a snap, and then we start getting detected, I'm thinking, oh god, was that through that gap? Because you saw the detected popped off, I thought I was spotted through that gap, and I thought the Ragnarok was near our cap, unfortunately, he was actually behind us, and when we finished the game with the defeat, the ace tank had top gun, the high calibre, 1260 base XP, and the loss, 6255 damage. It's a really, really great game for the Rain MX M4, and it's such a shame that it ended like that, that, that Ragnarok was behind us in a position where he could flank and get shots at us. And it's just unfortunate that the game ended in that defeat, because it was a nice game and it had potential as well. But God knows what the Ragnarok actually was on hit, in terms of hit points, because never actually saw him in the game. So that would have been the feasibility of whether we could have actually done it or not. So we're on to the third game of this video like i say sorry about the video being so long because normally there are about 35 to 40 i think this is probably gonna be 45 50 maybe and it's yes yeah, purely because it's got two different choices of gun and we, i want to give both guns fair cop and this is the first replay you're going to see the 130 millimeter gun and yeah run steps 
tier 9 game. And we're going to use this gun to pretty decent effect. This is probably the more average game again for this 130mm ga game. Gun. There we go. And as you can see, it slaps. Although we've low rolled. Twice. Unfortunately. We've got 560 alpha, although you wouldn't have seen it with those two shots. We get that nice shot into that standard B. And I'm thinking, right, okay. They haven't pushed aggressively into these dips or into that little bowl. So I'm going to use the mobility of this tank, which is really good. Like, any, like I would in any medium tank, and push straight to this ridge line here so I can get underneath their gun line. So we get over here, managed to get a nice shot into the Skoda T50 there, and then finally we see the rolls. Whew! 598. Those rolls are nice, but as you can see, this reload is pretty damn long. 12.8 second reload. It does feel very, very long, so you just got to be aware of that. Although, the 12.8 second reload is actually, while it is slow, there's a couple of the 120mm at tier 9, although some of them have been buffed like the AE Phase 1. They used to reload for around that number for 400 alpha, so having that 560 is pretty nice for that. And unfortunately there, oh, the timing could not have been worse. We went for the so shot into the side of the T-30's turret, and that AMX 1390 motion pull in front of us just as we fired. That timing was awful, and then the second shot is don't lazy aim, kids. Just aim properly, and we would have hit that dragon, but unfortunately, we ended up hitting the floor. Which, again, with this really bad reload, is kind of painful. <laughs> I say really bad reload. It's not, it's not bad for 560 alpha at tier 9. It's actually pretty damn good for, for 560 alpha. It is just with how derpy it is and the fact that it is, it does feel quite long. So right there's an indicative thing of the tracks. That guy managed to snap the shot straight into our side, hit our tracks, auto penned it, which he not actually would because there's no armor, and automatically tracked us. Happens all the time. Unfortunately, the 705 manages to get another shot into us, and he actually hits the cheeks of the turret there because he's firing premium, which is 300 plus pen, and he went straight through the cheek and penned us again. That can happen. You've got to be very careful against 300 plus millimeter pen rounds. Because if your turret is ever so slightly turned, they will pen the cheeks and it's very annoying. And unfortunately, that guy penned it. Now we're progressing aggressively against this T28. And you can see, we're just making sure the gun's aimed in. Oh no, the derpiness of the gun. Just We had the Capola and most of his tank and it just hit the little bit of ridgeline we could see. And say it's what happens with this gun. I said this gun is derpy. It does feel derpy. The Alpha is delightful, but that handling... Oof. As I say that... As I say that, thanks game, snap that target shot straight into the CS-52 lease. That was far less likely to hit than that fully aimed shot on the Coppola of the T-28. But that's just the way the cookie crumbles. RNG, people. RNG. And we're up to 3.7k damage with 320 assistance. We're coming over to get a shot into this AE phase 1. We get a nice shot slapped into his side for 557. And he's being currently mobbed by my team. I'm just going to see if I can try and get there to get a shot into him and then try and get in behind these heavy tanks. But unfortunately, we can't, just can't quite do it because they are evaporating over there. And even if we hadn't crashed into our teammate, we'd have never got there. So, yeah, that's pretty much the average game for the Lorraine MXM4 with this 130mm gun for a tier 9. 4.277, well, 4,277 damage. And 309 assistance with the Confederate. The second class, 1,422 base XP. Well, 1,360 base XP. I wasn't topping that game. It was the 1,390. We'll play it. 1,316 base XP. I'd say pretty average game for a tier 9 heavy. Pretty average game for the Lorraine MXM4. That 130mm gun, like I say, is really, really derpy. But it absolutely slaps and it's really nice. So, yeah, this is the best game I had in this tank with the 130mm gun. And we are on Hidden Village. Forgot the name of the map there. And again, we're tier 9 game. And it's like, right, okay. Where am I going to go? Well, I could medium tank it, right? And go to E5, E6. Well, the E6 ridge over there. And try and start shooting people that cross into the village itself. But I decided, no, you know what? I've got the alpha. I'm going to go and slap in the sort of more heavy tank brawly location. But the thing is with the heavy tank brawly location on, heavy, on Hidden Village is that it does have that ridge line that you can get hull down on. I can get hull down on it and I can use the great turret armor. 
So that's what we're going to go do. Once it progresses from there, it gets a bit more awkward for the tank. But I can get hull down on that ridge and I can, like I say, you know, have a pretty decent time. As you can see, though, quite a lot of their team have actually pushed the hidden village. And it's like, oh, I wonder what's coming over here then. I don't think there's going to be much because a lot of their team have pushed that village. Which is never a good thing because you can get nailed, completely destroyed. If the enemy team takes this position or, should I say, this top end that we have here... If we take this position and take those ridge lines, basically if you try and leave that village, you get absolutely trashed. Because you get outspotted and you get outshot. And it happens all the time. So you're best not to send a lot of tanks that way. So we managed to block both the both the mouse chin there and the T30 off our turret. And we managed to get a nice shot into the T30. Now I decided, you know what, I'm going to push forward aggressively and try and get towards them, because they haven't been as aggressive themselves. The T-30 ends up poking around and getting a shot at our turret and bouncing. Unfortunately, we got penned by the mouse chin as well. But when I did actually shoot that T-30 there, I didn't expect him to pull forward like he did. I noticed his gun barrel, and his gun barrel was slightly different to what it should be. So I actually saw he was a bit stock, which means he didn't quite have the alpha. I think he had the 105mm gun, which means he only had 320. So I was more confident in going in front of his gun. 639, there we go. That's the best roll I've had in this tank. 639 on that object, 416 there. That's a big ouchies. Now this mouse chin's coming after us. I don't want to be brawling against a mouse chin in this tank. I don't have the armor to be doing it. He has a lot of armor, but the thing is I do have a very similar alpha to him, which is nice. I've got 560, he's got 490. And while he, he will pen me every time, I will struggle to pen him every time, but that's why we've loaded the premium to make sure, because I can go through his turret cheeks. So I am going to try and, side, well, give him a little bit of my side to try and see if I can bounce it. Fortunately, he shoots my outside track, which means that he only does track damage. And I think, right, great. that We got that shot through his turret cheek there. He's now a one shot for us. And he kind of catches me out a little bit because I thought maybe I'll have a little bit of better reload because that Mashin does have a fairly long reload. But actually, no, because I have 560, I should have thought about that a little bit more and been a bit safer. He actually has a better reload than I do. Is what it is. So we saw where the artillery fired from. And I'm thinking at this point, they've pushed aggressively in that village. I'm going to go kill Artie. That's why we load HE. I'm going to go kill the artillery because I'm hoping that from where that shell came from is about A3 and he's in the open. And that way I can put in a big juicy 640 alpha shell. But as we come round, we actually only spot the Tiger 2. And it's like, that's an AFK Tiger 2. Okay. Well, there we go. We see the artillery fire, which means we're not going to get a shot at him and we're not going to be able to pull after him because that is a dip that he's in. I'm not going after that. So we can shoot the HE at the Tiger 2 just to be doing a bit of damage. And we're going to pull back behind this ridge over here in case this Tiger 2 actually comes back. We get a nice shot into this track here. And while he is AFK, you always kill the AFK tank because they could come back and they are spotting you at every time. And you don't want to stay spotted. And there we go. He comes to life. It's like, hello, sir. You, you've come back from your toilet break. Oh, God. Okay, this is not good. Because I'm, I do have 365 hit points. If he high rolls, he could kill me. Naturally, he could also low roll. And I can take a hit from him. Which is what I decided to do to finish him off. And I pull back and wait for my reload. Because the team has actually kind of won the other flank. And I'm just waiting for my reload here before I go after this artillery and try and see anything that's along the B5 location. This is where the artillery actually catches me out, though, and thankfully it misses. Oh, my Lord, that is the heart attack moment when he did that because I did, he just snuck up out of that dip. I didn't expect him to be there, and fortunately enough, because my reactions were quick enough, we managed to get away from it, and 668 with the HE. Woo! Heart attack moment. That was one of the moments where I was like, oh, my God. That could have gone so much worse. Oof, we'll take it. We, we survived that. So now we're going to poke around and see if we can spot that medium tank that was at B6. But unfortunately, we end up getting spotted and detected there. And it's like, okay, there's something else a bit more like A5 or in that sort of general vicinity. I can't spot it, so I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to poke around and get shut down at this point. As you can see, our team is swarming in on that medium tank. Have a look. Yeah, the Astron Rex, he's getting shut down. I'm just going to wait for my team. There's no point sacrificing my hit points in a chancy move. I may as well wait for my team. And hopefully they'll be able to spot up whatever is along that B5 area. And I can get a shot to shut it down. As you can see this light tank is charging in. And there it goes. It gets spotted. It's the 416. We get incredibly lucky because we actually auto-aim and fired at it. And the shell 
Even though the auto-aim was actually aiming at the dirt there, the shell went high and ended up shutting down the 416. That puts us up to 6.9k damage with 382 assistance and 5 kills, which is a really nice total for this 30mm gun. Great driving me. And there's only one tank left, so I'm like, give me a top gun, top gun, top gun, top gun, come on. We've got to get there to get some shots at this other medium tank. He's quite healthy in the UDS-16. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this ridge line in front of us where this rock is to get myself high enough that where he is right now, I might be able to actually shoot at him from this rock. So that's what we're going to aim to do. He's been charged as well, so he might pull back. As you can see, he's pulling back. I'm like, can I actually see him from here? Maybe. We take the shot, and unfortunately, it's just a little bit too high, and it ends up destroying the destructible cover above, well, next to him, and just sails over his tank. And unfortunately, he's just safe, and we're just waiting for the reload. Hopefully, we'll get the shot in to shut him down. And actually, I think that shot probably would have shot him down if it was for the fact that the T-41E1 actually managed to do it. But do finish the game with a really great total of 5 kills, 6.9k damage, 382 assistance, the ace tank of the high caliber, 938 base XP. A really nice game for the 130mm on this gun, on this tank, like I say. The 120mm is probably the best gun for the tank, for sure. But this 130mm gives the tank character and makes it a little bit different to a lot of the other tanks at the tier. And, you know, it's alright. I say this tank is okay. It's not the best. It's not the worst. It's just alright. And, yeah, only you can decide whether it's actually worth it. So, as always, everybody, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Great success.